Welcome to this house of books. I'm Mark Taylor. And today we have, uh, we're going to feature a book called Hell with the Lid Off. The, uh, the author is a fellow named Bert Smith. He was a journalist in what the 1890s. And uh, uh, we have with us here the editor who uh, put together the book, uh, William Lambert. And to interview uh, William, we're going to have uh, Doug Ammons, who has a, a terrific book uh, set in about the same period of time, and it's about Butte. So, you know, I think I'm just going to get out of the way now and uh, let these two uh, get on with it. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Bill, it's great to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, so we had a little discussion earlier. I thought you had some great points here. So just to fill in for uh, our viewers and listeners, uh, how did you come across this? This is a, a manuscript of uh, the author, Bert uh, Smith, correct? Who is a cub reporter at, at a wild, wild time in Butte, the 1890s. And uh, so how did you come across this manuscript of this, this wild, what turns out to be a wild, really fascinating character? Well, Doug, I was in Butte, uh, well, it's uh, three years ago. I, I was the writer in residence at the Mining, uh, Mining City Writer, Writers Project uh, there in Butte. Being uh, uh, someone who lives in Maryland uh, beneath the Mason-Dixon line, I, I'm not accustomed to all the snow and ice you have in wintertime in, in Montana. So... Uh, I say, sought refuge in the uh, in the Butte uh, Silver Bow archives uh, for for several afternoons. I asked the archivist one day. I said, uh, "Well, what do you have here that's really cool? Uh, I'd like to. I need something to uh, to really get my teeth in." And she says, "Well, something just came in about two or three weeks ago that." you might like. It's a manuscript of a, of a reporter in the 1890s uh, Butte uh, era. And I said, bring it on. Uh, so so when, he, when he came in there, when you opened up the manuscript and you started into this uh, 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 story of this police reporter in what is really a very large complex city uh, out in the middle of the Montana wilderness. I mean, did you feel a natural kinship? You've written a lot and you've been a journalist. I mean, did you when you opened that up and you started reading his his this bigger than life character? I mean, what was your reaction? Oh, I really did. Uh, I I was drawn to uh, to Bert Smith's uh, uh, challenge and his humor. There's some really funny stuff in that book. Well, you also mentioned some interesting thing just about his character, right? Uh, uh, he really seemed to be able to get along well with uh, just this tremendous diversity of people, this, these people who are uh, very questionable in many ways. But it, it, I think it reflects very well on him that he was actually able to make uh, quickly a place there in this city, just again, uh, as the title says, you know, hell with the lid off. And so and, you see that in him, right? You know, I, that's probably, I think that's a character you have as well. Well, he had sources on both sides of the law. And perhaps one of my favorite parts of the book is when the, the, the two desperados, uh, uh, fast draw Billy Fay and that uh, loathsome morphine addict, uh, 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 both declare that they're going to shoot him. <laughs> the, well, you had to take him seriously, too, well, right? He I had mean, to this take is the him wild seriously. West. He had, yeah. he, he had a, uh, a moment of, of, of pure terror, and he he sat back and he thought, "Well, should I run? I love this. I love Butte, Montana. I love where I am. What am I going to do?" So he opened a drawer and he pulled out his pistol, and it, it happened to be a a pistol with with notches in the handle, and we we know what that meant. But uh, he didn't gain those notches. the The pistol was given to him by one of his police buddies. And uh, so or with a really good vibe to it, it's like, I'm gonna, <laughs> don't mess with me. I, I won't I won't describe what happens next because it's one of the fun parts of the book. But uh -huh. uh, uh, I, that was one of the stories that I was I, I relished. And indeed, I was able to finish that story for him. Yeah, it's interesting. Just, 
you, you know, the history of Butte in particular, and certainly the history of the West in general, is just filled with uh, characters who are bigger than life. It's part of, I think, the time and also the storytelling. But a lot of these people, it's hard to believe. Did you, did, was he doing things that you found hard to believe? Because when I read it, I thought, wow, this guy's just another Butte crazy, wild, <laughs> fun, really interesting character. So you have a you have a 21 year old teetotaler who lands there and refuses uh, cocktails or whiskey of any sort. Three years later, he's firing off rounds in in the in the in the uh, saloons and he's he's uh, running uh, running in the streets of 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 Butte. Uh, uh, they're they're rolling grindstones down Main Street of Butte. These 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 vast uh, steel wheels running the, dr rolling them down Main Street on Saturday night and watching people run for their lives to to get out of the way. Uh, playing these deadly jail games. There's a chapter in there called Jail Games when when people are actually shooting at one another. He and jailers and police are shooting one another in the uh, in the jail, and uh, playing these these great uh, tricks on one another. So he really had uh, uh, lost any any semblance of 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 uh, fear in that city after three or four years. So I really uh, yes he was he was quite the uh, he he became one of the characters. After covering so many characters, he became a character himself. Bill, is there anything that, that you're thinking of that you want to add? There was a lot of really funny stuff in the book, which was which which I really liked. For instance, the when the desperados were gonna were gonna shoot uh, Horace Smith, there were the under two undertakers came to him to bid for their business. And said, well, uh, <laughs> and, and some old, some old, uh, some of the old vigilante said, uh, don't worry, Bert, we're going to hang the guy. And uh, so, so <laughs> after he kills you, <laughs> after he kills you. So Bert said, well, I, I found that reassuring, but not exactly comforting. And yeah. the, uh, the, the, for instance, the, uh, the the uh, the racetracks. He he uh, he noted that some of the the before before the uh, uh, the new tracks were built. Uh, he noted that uh, some of the horses uh, uh, appeared like they might jump over the infield if they saw a bone lying there, which uh, <laughs> suggests that they weren't the the best quality horses uh, in uh, in America, but. But they ended up uh, the the Butte tracks were some of the finest tracks anywhere, and it's certainly in and high money too. A lot of money, high money there. in the West, and uh, some fine horses. They came from all over all over America to race in Butte, mm, and I think yeah, that with, uh, Bert Smith probably spent too much time at the racetrack. Uh, well, that's the funny thing, you know. You were pointing out he goes from teetotaler to to just a wild drunk from you know being a cub reporter and naive to being this uh, a savvy guy who's running lines on all different sides and, and writing up stories. And if he's done bad, man, he uses his pen and the newspaper to, to get even with whoever nailed him. Yeah, I just, uh, as a transformation of a person, you know, in his early twenties, I mean, there's kind of a, I don't know if it's a, 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 a coming of age story <laughs> so much as a survival yeah, story, but uh, yeah, again, really interesting. You know, I would add too that, that he was able to carry forth the story of some of the Butte characters and the, the millionaires from New York. Uh, Hine, F.A. Hines, for instance, that's where, uh, that's where both he and um, Bert ended up along with some of the other people who had made their millions, uh, uh, gone to New York, and and uh, uh, that's where that's where F. A. Hines experienced his demise uh, uh, in New York. Died very young. It, it was a time when he and he and Bert would uh, would drink in in the hotel bars, and F. A. Hines would uh, 
would would uh, uh, tell them stories of the old days. So it's not just the what happened in the 1890s, but it was also what happened at the, after the the first years in the new century. Well, it's hard to I, I agree. Hard to uh, really fathom the uh, uh, the depth and the breadth of. Butte's influence, and then the people who were a part of Butte or were directly affected by it. Heinze, for instance, you know, I mean, he's like a comet that comes on the scene and in the early, about 1890. And yeah, I mean, he leverages himself in a, just a couple of years, you know, through his smeltering and through his uh, sense for ore in the mining uh, into one of the two made, one of the three major characters that are, that are in uh, all of the copper industry. And a and a, and a uh, uh, you know a copper king, basically almost a billionaire, and at the time. So it's interesting to have Smith's take on this guy who is it's so easy. It's, it's like how do you get the inside scoop on somebody of that character? Um, and again, you know, it's just part. It's part of Bert's uh, personal view, and I think there's some exaggeration in storytelling. But you know, when isn't there? And, um, and it, yeah, it's a very fascinating bridge from the personal nature of Butte, where you have at least three billionaires in effect, and then dozens and dozens of other multi, multi millionaires walking shoulder to shoulder, passing each other, drinking together and whatnot, in just a few blocks in the middle of this place in Montana. So I, I like the feeling that that gives just what you're saying there, the feeling that it gives just the, the bridge but then also the intensity of what was happening in that viewed up town. <laughs> no question. But just, uh, 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 I, I just commend you with the insight and in bringing this story to us for an eyewitness view of Butte in a time in the 1890s that, uh, well, all the bark was off and people <laughs> were, uh, were doing everything they could any way they could and they came from all over the world to do it. So fascinating story. Thank you. Well, thank you. So thank you both so much. Uh, William's book is Hell with the Lid Off, Butte, Montana, a memoir of the wildest town in the West by 1890s police reporter, Horace Herbert Smith. And Doug's book is A Darkness Lit by Heroes, the Granite Mountain Speculator Mine Disaster of 1917. So again, thanks so much for doing this. This has been a great interview. Look forward thanks to it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Again. Yeah, nice chatting with you.